we are balancing magnesium plus oxygen and the products aren't given so we have to make a prediction let's first write out our reactants so this is mg plus o2 and i can already see that it's in the form a plus b will give us some compound ab so this is looking like it's shaping up to be a synthesis reaction and it's going to form magnesium oxide i'm going to cross the charges and we're going to be left with mgo i'm going to place a 2 in front to balance to balance the oxygens and that 2 also distributes to the mg so then i come back to the left and i make the adjustments that i need and my sum will be 5 for the coefficients Okay, so this looks like it was synthesis because it was in the form of some element or compound A plus B will make some compound AB. Aluminum plus hydrochloric acid will yield some products which will predict. So if you don't know, I mean, just start by writing something down and it should give you more clues. So aluminum is AL, hydrochloric is HCl because you cross the one and the one. So this looks like it's in the form A plus BX. So then I look on my notes to the right there, and it looks like it's shaping up to be a single displacement reaction. Okay, so it's going to form the products AX plus B. This is known as single displacement because A will switch places with B. So when you make your predictions, okay, you're first going to circle these. A and X will combine to form AlCl3. Remember, you have to cross the charges over again. And then B is hydrogen, but remember, hydrogen is one of the seven diatomics, so you're going to write H2. Okay, now that you're confident in predicting the products, you can then try balancing this equation. Okay, but make sure your predictions are correct, otherwise you're going to end up with some dead ends and you're going to be sitting there and you can't balance the equation. So, again, we're going to count them up. Aluminum, 1. Hydrogen, 1. Chlorine, 1 on the left. And on the right-hand side, it looks like a 1, 2, and a 3. Okay, so we're going to try our best to balance this equation. And I know from experience that a 6 will have to go there. So that would change our chlorine to 6. It distributes. And it will also change our hydrogen to 6. And because we wanted 6 on the left, we're going to put a 2 in front so that it distributes to the chlorine, changing it to 6. But it also changes our aluminum unintentionally, which is no problem. We're going to fix that. Okay, but first fix the hydrogen, put a 3 in front, now the hydrogens and the chlorines are balanced. One last thing to do is just put the 2 in front for aluminum. So now this looks good, everything is 2, 6, and 6 right there, it's looking fine. And let's add up our sum of coefficients, and we're left with 13. This one is a little bit more challenging, okay, there's a few polyatomics in this one. So aluminum sulfate, we're going to write out as Al2SO4-3 plus calcium phosphate. And again, we're going to crisscross the charges. Ca3 parentheses PO4-2. And now we're going to make a prediction. First, write out what the form of the equation looks like. It's in the form Ax plus By. And it will form Ay plus BX. So this is looking like it's double displacement. Okay, double displacement because the A and the B elements will switch places with each other and they take on like a new partner. So A will partner up with Y to form aluminum phosphate on the product side. So this is just AlPO4 and it will form a compound BX. So element B which is the calcium, will partner up with compound X, which is sulfate, to form calcium sulfate, which is just CaSO4. Remember, the charges are 2 and 2, so they just simplify to 1. So I'm confident that this is now correct. We can move on and try to balance the equation. I'm going to clean it up a bit by writing out the skeleton of the equation. Okay, The skeleton is just the unbalanced version of this. And now we can start placing our coefficients. 
For some of you, you may have to count. A few of you guys are gifted enough where you can just place the coefficients where you need them. So I'm going to try to balance my aluminums first. Place a 2 as a coefficient. So that 2 will also change my phosphate count. But I'm going to go ahead and balance my calcium. And placing that 3 there will fix the calcium. And it will also fix my sulfate. Okay, so at this point, our sum of coefficients is 1, 1, 2, 3, giving us a sum of 7. Alright guys, thanks for tuning in and watching the balance equations from start to finish. We did part 1, which was just simple balancing. Part 2 was changing the names into formulas. Part 3 was combustion reactions. And this video was all about predicting the products. So if you review the notes above me, you would see that there are five different types of reactions and they all follow a general pattern or form that you can easily spot. I don't think the mechanics of balancing an equation is very difficult. What might throw you off is some of the older stuff, so you might have to review my playlist from chapter 8, which is naming and writing formulas for ionic compounds, and chapter 9, which is naming and writing formulas for covalent compounds. So chapter 10 balancing equations is really a lot of this stuff kind of rolled into one big unit. So make sure you review those notes and thanks for tuning in. I'll see you next time on Win Chemistry.